Welcome back to Golf Central. Well, the pink dye designed Long Cove Club on Hilton Head Island is the site for the 11th Darius Rucker Intercollegiate. You've got 17 of the best women's programs in the country competing on one of the season's last big events before conference tournaments start in April. Today was day two of three in South Carolina. So Paige McKenzie, let's start with the highlights. Starting with Jensen Castle, former US Women's Amateur Champion on the par three eight. And just incredible touch going up the hill, then right back down. That is a speedy, speedy shot from back there. Excellent touch. Yeah, unfortunately, Kentucky won't be in shot of the team title tomorrow. But how about Megan Schofield? She's been leading the way in the individual race so far. Uh, here's her T-shirt on 13. Yeah, this part three is one of the more exposed greens on this golf course near the water, so it gets a little bit of wind, but no trouble there. Doing some good stuff at Auburn this week. She would move to four unders. Now, she did bogey 14. How about now on 15, her fourth? Yeah, and just a mistake on the approach shot into this position, and then a mistake on the chip, not able to take advantage of that part five. And she would finish at two under. So how about LSU's Edith Hertzman now on five for birdie? Yeah, just a freshman stepping up for LSU this week. Tough finish for her, bogeying seven, double bogeying eight, finished at even part. Ingrid Lindblad, the star that she is for LSU now on six. <laughs> Maybe a little frustration to celebrate that putt. <laughs> yeah, nice moment there. Finished at one under. So Matilde Kless now from South Carolina on 18 for birdie. Yeah. Lovely there from the senior. She would move to two under. So now at three under, Kless coming up the par three eight. Yeah, you saw a couple of players miss the screen long left. And this, not long enough to get into trouble and go down that hill. And bet, instead, it feeds right off the slope into great position. Yeah, it didn't look to begin with, but it ended up very nice indeed. A nice study there, as you mentioned, she would move to four under. So let's finish up with Cliff now, looking to uh, wrap things up with par on nine. Yeah, Mr. Green right had an okay pitch shot to that, but nice cleanup to save her car. Yeah, really nice finish there. That's going to make the evening taste a little bit sweeter. So let's take a look at the team leaderboard host school, South Carolina. After having a really rough start to the day, they managed to turn things around and had the lowest team score of the day. That puts them at one under, the only team under par at the moment. But really, you could say it's a three-horse race between LSU and Auburn at the moment. Not much separating those top three teams heading into tomorrow's final round. And over on the individual side, it is that uh, senior, Matilde Kless, who leads the way with a two-stroke lead over Megan Schofield, who led through 18 holes. Ingrid Lindblad, though, only three shots back, and she is a certified killer, I think you could say, in the women's college team. So with that, let's welcome uh, the team back in with Brentley Romine coming to us live from Long Cove. Uh, Brentley, let's talk about our leaders first, South Carolina. As I mentioned, not the best start to the day, but they are in position to take it home tomorrow. Yeah, and I think you have to start with their team leader, Matilde Kless. I talked to her head coach, Kaylin Anderson, and she said she's really a player that when she tunes in, she could really get the job done. You look at she took a leap after her first two years as a 120th ranked player in college golf. Now she's right around the top 50 each of the past two seasons. Uh, this event really means a lot to her. She was T6 here last year, and of course now in a position to get her first college win. And as a team, South Carolina a couple weeks ago, poor performance uh, in the Bahamas, finished fifth, 26 shots behind Wake. And Coach Anderson, I mean, she was blunt. She said, we fell on our faces. So she challenged this team to be more disciplined, and they have responded. You have Plus leading their superstar, Hannah Darling. She's tied for 14th with their freshman, Mia Lusan. And even Justine Fourneau, 81 yesterday, no birdie. She goes bogey-free today, improves by 11 shots shoot 70. And one more thing, surprising that South Carolina, for as great of a program as they've been, have not won an SEC title since 2002. Well, there's a lot of SEC teams right below them on the leaderboard, so a huge opportunity to show that they are the team to beat and what many believe is the best conference in women's college golf. Okay, a lot of motivation for South Carolina heading into tomorrow. And over on the individual side page, I mean, some surprising names in this top 10, but one name that always stands out, Ingrid Lidblad. She's just uh, four shots off the lead. She's got to have a great chance heading into tomorrow. Three, I should say. She does. 
Yeah, she certainly does. And she's certainly the, the player, I think, with the largest footsteps chasing the leaders. Uh, when you look, there's not a ton of winning experience in front of her, but she could have been a little bit closer to the lead had she finished a little stronger. And this is probably something she's going to learn from and take into tomorrow. We saw on that eighth hole, that par three, getting behind the green. That is trouble because it is so fast once you get back up the hill. She made a mistake here in not even giving herself that opportunity, so it led to a bogey on the par three eighth. You go to the ninth hole. This can be a birdie hole if you put yourself in position. Out of position, chipped it to this point or putted to this point, and then missed the short putt, which led to the bogey. So bogey, bogey finish for Ingrid. Puts her now three back going into tomorrow. I, I mentioned it, Steve Burkowski on the broadcast mentioned it, four of her top, or excuse me, four of her 10 collegiate wins have come from trailing through 36 holes. So maybe a position that she's comfortable in, but it definitely could have been closer moving into tomorrow. Okay, and just uh, finally, Brentley, you just mentioned uh, South Carolina, of course, probably the favorites, but it's only a four shot advantage they've got in the team side. Uh, who are you looking as to who could make a charge tomorrow? Yeah, this might not be a team that could potentially challenge for the win, but 15 shots back, crazier things have happened. But I'm looking at Vanderbilt, Commodore's 20th ranked team in the country, but maybe a little bit of a su surprise in this field. But I want to go back to Monday, their first nine. They played the back nine. They're counting scores in 10 over par. Well, they responded two over on the second nine, and then today two over as a team. I talked to their head coach, Greg Allen. He was really glad or proud of the way that they didn't let things continue to stay off the rails. They got back on it. And this is a team that slowly built confidence. They got a couple of wins against some lesser fields right before this, and they're proving uh, that they belong amongst the best teams in the country. And they're doing it without their second best player, Lynn Lim, a freshman. She has three top tens, second on the team in scoring. She's out with illness, but their star Celine Salakow, T3 individually. And, you know, like I said, might not get the win this week, but I think top three finish, you got to be feeling, you know, if Vanderbilt gets that, they got to be feeling like they're, uh, you know, walking out of here with a, you know, win of their own. Okay, watch out for Vandy. Don't forget that final round action uh, comes your way tomorrow here on Golf Channel at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, and we will be here ready to get you set on College Central.